welcome to Microcosmos. My name is Lindsay, and this week we have a very special episode dedicated to Thomas Nichols, Colin's father, who worked for Martin Marietta, the company that built Magellan. The mission started with Venus orbiting and imaging radar in the late 1970s, but due to budget restrictions, it was canceled in 1982. Later, the Solar System Exploration Committee proposed a simplified version of the mission in 1983, the Venus Radar Mapper. It would focus on a single scientific instrument. The main objectives were to obtain the following. A near-global radar image of the Venusian surface, a near-global topographic map with 50 km spatial and 100 meter vertical resolution, and near-global gravity field data, as well as to understand the geological structure of the planet. Later, the mission was renamed Magellan in honor of the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, who circumnavigated and mapped the Earth in the 16th century. Due to budget restrictions, the spacecraft was built using spare parts of previous missions like Voyager, Galileo, Ulysses, and Mariner 9. Because Venus's atmosphere is thick and opaque, orbital survey was not an option. Radar mapping was chosen, but the mission was also limited because the antenna size was not optimal. They imitated a large antenna by using ground computers to process the information, a method known as synthetic aperture. On May 4, 1989, the mission launched aboard the space shuttle Atlantis. The original planned trajectory would have Magellan reaching Venus in six months, but after the Challenger disaster in 1986, the use of Centaur-G upper stage was nixed in favor of the less powerful inertial upper stage. Magellan orbited the sun 1.5 times before reaching Venus. It took 15 months. On August 7, 1990, Magellan reached Venus and a successful orbital maneuver placed the probe on an elliptical orbit. During the next four years, the probe completed five mapping cycles and changed to a circular orbit. After the sixth and final mapping cycle in 1994, the orbit was lowered to begin the windmill experiment. Touching the upper atmosphere, the solar panels would serve as paddles, and with the thrusters keeping the spacecraft from spinning, it was possible to measure the basic oxygen-gas surface interaction, which provided data that helped design future missions. After this, Magellan burned in the Venusian atmosphere. This mission helped us understand that the surface of Venus is mostly covered by volcanic materials and is geologically young due to the lack of impact craters. This mission also showed us that though Venus has a very dense atmosphere, there is no evidence of wind erosion. Magellan created the best high-resolution radar mapping of Venus. Currently, the only future mission to the planet is being planned by Roscosmos, the Venera D mission. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, feel free to like and subscribe. We'll see you for the next episode of Microcosmos.